If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening. I think I can speak for Lee Hayes and Paul Robeson and Woody Guthrie and a whole lot of other people who helped start Sing Out that we'd all be just as proud as anything if we could all be here tonight. One little issue of Sing Out is worth more to humanity than any thousand tons of dreamy, dopey junk dished out from the trees of our forests along every Broadway in this world. I don't know of any magazine, big or little, that comes within a thousand million miles of Sing Out when it comes to doing good around the world. Woody Guthrie said that in 1951, and Pete Seeger is probably just the guy to tell you how Sing Out got started. Right after World War II, Lee Hayes, who later on wrote songs like If I Had a Hammer and Kisses Sweeter Than Wine, he and I had sung together before World War II in a group called the Almanac Singers with Woody Guthrie and others, Sis Cunningham. After the war, <clears throat> Instead of trying to form a singing group, we said, really, we need some kind of a publication, some kind of a newsletter, so that people all across the then 48 states who were interested in this kind of music could keep in touch. That, at that time, we still hoped that the labor unions uh, would uh, be a main way of getting good songs around the country. Our hopes were dashed by the Cold War, but we started an organization called People's Songs with a monthly newsletter. Every month it came out with some new songs, some old songs, and a little bit of discussion and criticism and news. I think the first issue was about 10 or 12 pages. And within about a year, our circulation was way up to what we thought was a huge one of one or 2,000. We had readers in California and Hawaii and in the southern states and the northern states. But after three years, uh, we went bankrupt. We, had, we owed all of $3,000 and couldn't figure how to pay it. And uh, the staff was burned out. Uh, the board of directors were burned out. And we closed the doors. We didn't know how to pay the rent. The People Songs Library was stashed in my living room. And I mimeographed a little interim newsletter to members around the country saying, sooner or later we're going to have to have a, another magazine because the job needs to be done. Uh, maybe McCarthyism is closing in, but we're not going to give up. I think we did microfilm the People Songs Library in case it would get seized by the McCarthyites. But about a year later, Irwin Silver, and Bob Wolf, Herbert Haufrecht, and others, Paul Robeson, Alan Lomax. Uh, we decided, let's start an organization. We called it People's Artists, and we started a magazine and called it Sing Out. A little office on 21st Street. And the first issue, I think, was about 20 pages. Very small, maybe, maybe only 16 pages. But it came, came out regularly month after month, year after year, and sometimes came out late. And every year we had to hold fundraising concerts to try and pay the printer's bill. But you could say that what Singing Out is now is uh, uh, the result of those early determinations that songs were more than just to have fun with. Songs were to help the world survive. Uh, so these songs helped Civil Rights Movement, Sing Out first printed We Shall Overcome, a lot of other good songs. Uh, and we also printed some extraordinary uh, old folk songs that had never been heard of or never been printed. Somebody came along and uh, made up a song. We'd print it when nobody else would print it. country from shore to shining shore 
It really made me wonder the things I heard and saw. I saw the weary farmer plowing his sod and loam, and I heard the auction hammer just a knocking down his home. But the banks are made of marble with a guard at every door. In 1982, similar to what Pete was talking about earlier, Sing Out hit another financial snag. Our circulation had dwindled to somewhat less than 2,000. Um, the staff hadn't been paid for a while, rent hadn't been paid, we owed the printers a bunch of money, and a decision was made that by the staff that they really needed to pull up stakes. Um, I met with Pete that year at the Hudson River Revival, and we agreed that it was really important for Sing Out to be able to continue in some way. So right after the festival, a number of friends of mine and I got together, rented a truck, loaded up the contents of the offices in New York, and moved it to the Lehigh Valley while we fundraised and put together a newsletter to, uh, you know, to reach out to our membership to figure out a way to continue doing the work that Sing Out had done up to that point. Um, in uh, April of 1983, we started publishing Sing Out again. And, uh, you know, I started out, you know, we started out in a, a very, very small office space uh, in eastern Pennsylvania in the Lehigh Valley. We reorganized as a nonprofit organization um, and tried to look at, you know, uh, the surveying that we had done uh, and reaching out to our membership through the newsletter to find a, the best way of being able to, you know, to serve the needs of our community. People who like what they call pure folk music are often disgusted. They say, you've got too much politics in the magazine. Some people who like pure politics are disgusted. They say, you waste too much time singing folk songs. And Sing Out firmly holds a path right between them and is interested in songs that have fun and songs that occasionally have, have got a powerful point to make. I'd say our while no two issues are exactly alike, Sing Out has stubbornly held to the idea that you can mix things up, that you can uh, sing, but sing with a purpose. In the last decade, our members have helped us purchase a home in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, we decided that we wanted to expand on some aspects of what Sing Out was doing. Um, to take advantage of the tremendous resources that have been built up since the late 1940s in collecting recordings and books and letters and newspaper clippings uh, and to create a resource center. Um, I also did some historical digging through how Sing Out had been set up in its early days and realized how important its symbiotic relationship with Oak Publications was. So we decided to start a publishing division uh, called um, sing Out Publications, and the first book that we put out was Rise Up Singing. The publication of Rise Up Singing and its success led to reissuing the reprints from Sing Out series as collected volumes, and other books like Sing for Freedom and Carry It On, and Pete's musical autobiography, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Following up on the successes of our publishing, a few years ago we were able to merge with uh, Legacy Books, one of the premier uh, academic resellers of uh, folk music publications and we made that you know another way of being able to bring this material out to, you know to the public but the magazine has really remained a centerpiece of what we do and right after our, we finished celebrating our 50th anniversary we began releasing CDs that came out with each issue of the magazine also sharing the songs in an audio fashion along with in print to help people learn them because the bottom line really is that what Sing Out is about is along with helping to teach people about the music and providing a forum for our community to, to have a discussion about this stuff. It's really about people trying to make this music a part of their everyday lives, to learn the songs, to sing them, you know, to make music in any way that we can find to do that, you know, is a good thing. I sing out love between all of my brothers,
It's the hammer of justice. It's the bell of freedom.